All right. Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuilds. Today, I'm going through the Franklin Quick Change for our 1937 Ford Snowball Dirt Racer. And, uh, well, let's put it this way. It's been a couple months since I took this apart. And as you can see, there's a lot of parts. I ordered all the bearings at the time of disassembly. And um, needless to say, my uh, filing system lost my notes. So I have absolutely no clue how it goes back together. Uh, that's full disclosure, by the way. So we've muddled around here today, and at the end of it, we think we got it all figured out, except for this washer. So at the end of the day, we'll figure out where this goes, and uh, maybe we need it, maybe we don't. I guess uh, it'll be a mystery until then. So first off, though, I got my carrier. I have the bearings, the tapered bearings, in the oven. They're heating, they're warming up, so I'm gonna be able to slide those right on and uh, get this piece buttoned up. The only thing I have to really be mindful is to make sure I put this shim in here, as that's what was in there when I took it apart. Then we'll move on. At some point, I have the race that coincides with this. I have those in the freezer. So I'm gonna go through and do what everybody's asked me to do of, you should freeze those, they'll slide right in. So we'll see how that works. And if they don't, we'll use the press. With that, I'm gonna carry this over closer to the oven so I lose as little heat as possible. It should just plop right on, no problem. I'll put a little bit of grease around there just to help uh, that initial start to be a little smoother. I found that works, uh, is very helpful, especially when I remember to do it. And, um, I guess that's it. Here we go. Here's the ride. Well, there's that part. We won't need it for a while. <laughs> but there's two bearings. We don't have to confuse with something else. This is a little more height appropriate press, in my opinion. Nice and square. Let's go see how well our freezer did with the races for this. Jesus. Not the lightweight version. Hey, look at that, there's caddy motor. Get our Bubba Angus out. You know what? These might be a little freezer burnt, then. <laughs> Clearly been in there for since last year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's here's the actual bearing. Although I think those bear those those are are as hard as a uh, yeah. No. Yeah, cold not as good as hot. To the press. To the press we go. All right, so moral of the story is probably a little harder to contract a solid than it is to expand a solid. So, eh, might work for some, didn't work here. Doesn't mean you're gonna try it on something different later. But uh, for now, we're just gonna press them both in. This one's done. All right, so, this is our right side axle. And given that we're doing a circle track car that turns left or goes left, all the gear lube would run down to the right side tube 
and basically starve the gear of any gear lube. So we're going to grease the bearings on the hubs and we're actually gonna put a little bit of restriction in here in this seal that's gonna go now. This isn't going to seal 100% to the axle itself, but it's gonna give enough of a ridge it should slow it down uh, so we're not getting a bunch of it down there. Although, man, it would be nice if it did. Give me that stupid washer. Nope, doesn't go there either. For anything else, we can always hang our mailbox on. Very great mailbox post. And we'll put this on the right direction. Boom. And boom. Well, actually, I guess we should do it right. It goes this way. Yay. All right, so here's our next, I don't know, let's just call it a hurdle. Uh, we need to support this right here to press this bearing in. Um, now, that's not to say I can't just tap it in because it, maybe it won't take as much force as I think, but I'm certainly not going to attempt to put a press down here and uh, well, basically blow this out if I'm not careful. What'd you figure out? Okay, so we looked around the shop. Gotta be creative at times. So what we come up with is this. So ultimately, it shouldn't take a lot of force, right? So I have it supported using the vise in a non-conventional manner. And uh, it clears everything. Oddly enough, it seems to be all right. Um, what possibly could go wrong? So we're going to use, again, a little bit of wheel bearing grease on the outside just to help uh, let it slip. We got these great little viewing windows, not only for the camera, but my fingers to go into. I'm not using a brass hammer because every time I use a brass hammer, I get brass chunks down in my wheel, my bearing. I've yet to destroy a race with a regular hammer. I'm also not hitting it like it's a, I don't know, a piece of oak. Still don't know. There comes a point in a project where you just have to cut bait and say, we're jumping in with both feet. This washer, we're putting here. Yes, I know, it's sloppy. But if you notice, the wear pattern on it is also sloppy, which indicates it was always sloppy. So the way that looks is you have these nuts that come down on top of that. And this sets your bearing preload a little more, or all of it, if I can get it to start. There we go. And we've gone through our videos, we've looked and looked and looked. 
and we can't find anywhere other than here. And if you see this, it does, it makes sense. Okay. Now it's gonna be a little bit tricky as far as holding this from spinning while I torque this, but what's gonna be worse is actually reaching it because I need a socket that's about that deep. And it's an inch and seven eighths, so it's a very large socket. So I have one, but it doesn't take long to figure out the new problem. The new problem is it's not deep enough. So I'm going to modify this with this chunk of pipe. I'm going to use a brass punch just kind of wedged in here. Again, this does not take a whole lot of torque to uh, tighten this. And I'm not going to use a torque wrench on this part because it's all by feel as far as this amount of torque. And then I'm going to use my small torque wrench to know what the running torque is. Of this bearing. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I'm sure that was confusing because normally speaking, we'll take a torque wrench and we torque everything, right? So we'd come in here and you'd torque this down with setting. The issue is I need to know what the running torque is. So the amount of torque it takes to rotate the pinion after this nut is set. It's not a ton. Um, it's in the inch pound range and, and it's a by feel type of thing, a little bit. And I like, I like how that feels, it's pretty good. Um, all right, now with that, we can put in our locking ring, which does nothing, nothing more than fold down and lock over the, the uh, nut below this. And then this is a, another nut that comes in and just jams in on top of it. So uh, here I'm at the back end of this assembly, center of section assembly, and I just need to put this cover on. Of course, the two gears in here as well. But long story short, I lost the gasket that I ordered. And you know what? That happens more often than not, or you don't get a gasket, or there isn't one available. So it's always a good idea to have some gasket material around. So my rockauto.com tip of the day is go check out this link right here and it'll show you how to make a gasket. All right, here we go. Now we are ready to put in our gears. So we have a big gear and a small, we have a small gear and a big gear. P 
purely by the number of teeth. So a 20 and a 22, if I want that number to be uh, gear ratio to be lower, I need to put the small gear up top and the big gear on the bottom. And of course, it flips it the other direction. So first thing is this little spacer goes in here. Here's my bottom gear. And then here's my top gear. There. Just like that. All right. Now I'm going to put a little bit of uh, right stuff on one side of my cover gasket. It'll kind of make it reusable that way. So in other words, I'll stick it to here. That way when we pull the cover on and off, it won't stick as much, at least to the main cover, and just be able to pop on and off because this is a, um, a tunable function. So uh, in fact, we know we've talked about what this gear ratio is. So just as a general terms, get out my winners. Don't mind the winners, it's all the same. So you have, um, we have a 2022 right here. So if I run the gears like I have right now with the base of a 486 uh, ring and pinion, that gives me a 534 gear ratio. And if I flip flopped them where I have the big gear on top and the small gear in the bottom, that would be a 442. So, uh, and then you can see that there's a huge bunch of differences there as we go. That's where we're at. We're gonna start with that and then we can use that to tune uh, when we hit the track. All right, so like, any good rebuilder. I went through and double checked my uh, gear lash. Uh, so specifically looking at how my teeth are mating up. And like any good builder, I didn't have the paint that I normally would use, but I used some gear grease, which works perfect because all you're looking for are witness mark. And given that this was um, assembled and run before, all I'm really looking for is to see that I'm putting grease or marking it from one end to the next, right like it did before, or as I had in the past. So here you can see that that's the case. Um, the lash is a little bit trickier to, to check, but I feel pretty comfortable with where that's at. And uh, mainly, we put in new bearings. Things could change. But bearings are so precise that the amount of change there would be pretty minimal, and uh, probably not very well to observe with a naked eye. So. Uh, we're, uh, we're happy with this. At this point, I'm gonna put it together from a final standpoint, meaning I'm gonna put some um, right stuff in here for sealing the bell halves. Now, depending on which one of these you may have, you may use a big uh, O-ring or another big seal. For what we're doing, a, a goop of, uh, of right stuff will work perfect and lock this all back together. And then at this point, this axle assembly in its heaviest form will be completed. Hubs and the axles will go in when they're in the car. Here's our quick change rear end. It's all back together with exceptions of a couple drain plugs and some minor stuff like that. Other than that, that's gonna be a wrap here for today because, well, quite frankly, I got some racing to go do myself. So. You go out in the shop and you go get your work done because my day is over. See ya.